Hey guys, Daniel here. This is another video. And in this video, I'm actually joined by the legendary Alex Sinclair. If those of you don't know, Alex is a color artist or a colorist. He's probably best known for his work. He's actually the colorist on comics such as Flashpoint, Batman Hush, uh, The Justice League, Superman, Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad, Flash, Superman Year One, Green Lantern, and more recently, The Amazing Spider-Man. And he's probably done about a million comics, say. So I only listed off some of them there. Uh, but Alex has very kindly agreed to come on and let me annoy him for the next hour or so. Uh, but Alex, thank you so much uh, for coming on. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on this. Uh, it's my Looking forward to it. pleasure. It's going to be like great fun, as you can, as I'm sure you can see. And but like I was talking about, this isn't the first time we met. We got to meet at Dublin Comic Con maybe two years ago, or was yep. it? Yeah, two years. 2019. Yeah, so you came to Dublin. You enjoy your stay. Right. Lovely. I loved I, it. It rained a lot, a little bit. That's probably the best answer you could possibly give. Uh, it's it's probably, it's literally raining all the time here. There's, I've been told we call it the Emerald Isle for a reason. Uh, so I suppose, depending on how you get the weather, you'd either enjoy your stay or you either won't. And um, But yes, yeah, so uh, it's going to be really nice to talk to you. So many different things to discuss. Uh, but more recently, you've begun working on The Amazing Spider-Man, I believe. Correct, yes. Wow, yes. and you've been with DC for a while. So how did The Amazing Spider-Man even come about? So, um... I'd been under exclusive with DC Comics for pretty much my entire career. Uh, ever since DC bought Wildstorm, uh, I started doing work for DC. And when I left DC in 2006, that's when I left to do freelance and, and sign an exclusive contract with DC. And I've renewed it every, every time up until that this last year. Um, they weren't sending me or weren't going to be able to send me the regular work that they, that they had in the past. And so I didn't feel right signing a contract that would pigeonhole me into not having any work to do. And so I, I made the, the hard decision to not sign with them again and, and kind of put myself out there and hopefully get some freelance work with other companies. And it's, it's been great. And that's uh, I've been doing stuff primarily for Marvel with amazing Spider-Man and then the, uh, the Spider-Man group with Nick Lowe and, and, and enjoying that a lot. Uh, I've actually done four issues now. Wow. And we'll and be doing Spider Man. He's not really a major character or anything. I don't even know much about Spider Man, you know. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. you're very much again. It's not like he's one of the biggest characters in the world, I suppose. And um, so, yeah, like, has that been fun for you getting to work in this iconic character such as Spider Man? It's been amazing. It, it kind of took me back to the days when I first did a Batman book, right? It's, it's a character that you've, you've, you've read growing up and you've loved growing up, and, and, but you never got to work on. And so it, it kind of went back to those, 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 times when the first time I ever colored the flash or I ever did Batman or, or justice league or wonder woman, it, it felt like, you know, that, that young guy that colored comics way back when. <laughs> yeah. And so like, were you a fan of Spider-Man growing up or. Yeah. I think my brother and I pretty much read everything. And so we were fans of most, uh, most characters out there. And Spider-Man was definitely one for me, uh, you know, reading a lot of the books growing up. Uh, amazing and spectacular Spider-Man. Absolutely. And so like Spider-Man, of course, he's such an iconic character, but have you noticed anything about him while getting to color him? Like how many, like how intricate his design is? Because I can look at him and I can think, man, he's so cool. But if I had to draw him, I'd like blow my brains out because of how difficult he looks to draw. And so have you noticed anything specific about Spider-Man while coloring him? Like, oh, the way that works or anything like that? Well, what's funny is that uh, the, the books that I worked on had, was were right after he got his brand new costume so it was like hey i get to work on spider-man it's like oh man i don't get to do the classic costume <laughs> i don't want that anymore you just throw the pages out the window what the hell i don't want this <laughs> no but it's actually a pretty fun costume to, to color it's, it's it's a lot of fun to work with and and then down the line i i did eventually get to do him with this with this uh his classic costume there's some really cool things that the new costume does that that, that are will be revealed down the line so uh, it's pretty cool. Oh wow! So like, what can it can it shoot like mustard or something out of the thing onto hot dogs or something that's weird right. like that? Well, oh, I, I knew it straight York. away. How did I get it? You know, <laughs> and like that's that's kind of what you need if, especially if you're in New York. I mean, I've been there, and it's probably just you just probably spray a mustard or anything like that, and like you know, you know, there's so many different story ideas you could do with that. Like, I know I'm, I'm a money making machine. Marvel <laughs> editors, they're always trying to buy my scripts, but I'm like, come yeah. on, you know. Take your time. Um, so yeah, like the new Spider-Man suit. Uh, so I, I have seen a bit of it. Uh, like I said, made the sacrifice instead of doing my homework of reading comics. Don't thank me. I try. And um, so yeah, like did, so did they tell you, okay, for this costume and did they give you the designs or something or say we want his this to be white, this to be yellow 
or just to be gold or anything like that? Or did you basically have a free hand in what colors went into it? No, they already gave me the turnarounds with all the, the, the custom colors and the, and the glows and effects and stuff like that that came with it. So it was easier for me in that I just jumped on and, and, and colored what had already been established. Yeah, absolutely. And like, it's probably a bit of a stupid question, but is there much differences between like working for Marvel and working for DC or has it been kind of new for you getting to work for Marvel? Um, no, it's pretty much the same. I mean, uh, file format. You break every... into your house and then just throw scripts at you. And you're like, no more, please. So I, I'm sure, I, I'm, ba- I'm basically kind of 50% certain that's how comics work. Like editors just break into your house and then throw scripts at you. <laughs> yeah. uh, as you can see, I have a great grip on how things work like this. Um, yep. so yeah, who's your favorite Spider-Man character out of the whole vast world? Uh, well, Spider-Man, definitely. Um, but the like villain-wise, um, I'm a fan of Doctor Octopus. I, I like the, I like coloring metal. So you know, his arms is, are definitely something that, that that are fun to work with. You like uh, coloring metal? That seems like it'd be every artist, like every colorist's least favorite thing to color because like the reflection and all that. Uh, so like, have you gotten to color metal much? Yeah. Yeah, parts of his suitor metal, uh, and and the uh, it's called the Sinister Syndicate or the Crime Syndicate is there, and so there's uh, there's some uh, metallic arms involved. You imagine you're sitting there like I can't believe I agreed to do a Spider Man book and I have to draw all these metals and all this. God damn, uh, God damn, DC, can can you take me that one? <laughs> So yeah, like I like I said, so many different uh, colors comic. But first off, let's talk about how did you get into comics? Growing up, were you a comic book fan, or how did you just get into comics? Yeah, my brother and I would buy them, read them, draw them together. Ever since I can remember, we we save all our, our allowance and we'd go to the the local convenience store and just kind of pull everything we could afford off the rack and, <laughs> and go back and read them and and reread them. And then we'd actually like drawing the stuff we really liked in the books. We kind of try and draw them as well. Yeah. Uh, and so that that the love for the medium you know, born out of that and, and a great experience with my brother. And, and, and it just continued through my adult, uh, my, my teen years and, and into high school and college. And, and uh, it was in a, in college when, when I realized that maybe I could make a career in, in the comic book industry. And so my, my portfolio changed from, from watercolors of wildlife to <laughs> superheroes <laughs> so like did you take any of the on the animal team superheroes like batman owl man ambush bug or all these different type of ant-man or just like hey, basically same thing and of course ant-man with the metallic helmet so you can kind of tie it all together that's the you see you see it, it all ties together like i said um so yeah we, like were you a fan of any specific comics growing up um a lot of i think the books that i was a fan of were very centric with the people that were working on them so i loved captain america when mike zek was on it uh thor when walt simonson was on it uh fantastic four with john byrne you know x-men with jim um jim aparo and batman so i they were very like artist centric for me uh and, and so my my love for them kind of was in part because of the artists that were working on the books yeah, and you mentioned some names there. Such a shame none of them ever went on to be big or anything like that. Yeah. You know, it's so sad. Like, I mean, you have to give you have to give them a little bit of respect because, you know, they tried something, it didn't work out as well. Of course I'm messing because all of those are literally living legends. And um, so, yeah, like, so what was your first actual comic book work? Uh, the first stuff I, I ever colored that saw print was for, uh, was, was Wildstorm. It was actually still Homage Studios at the time. Uh, Jim hadn't, hadn't named the studio Wildstorm yet. Uh, and uh, they were in the middle of doing the, an image crossover with, with Extreme Studios and, and Top Cow. And all these guys were putting this um, Deathmate crossover where they got all their, cross, uh, all their characters together. So my first work was actually not for Homage Studios, but for Rob Liefeld. He had six pages of, of work that he had done that, um, that he, his color group couldn't do yet. And so they sent him down to the studio and I got to color them. Uh, so that was like the first ever printed stuff that I did. And then later in that issue, I did some work for, for, uh, for Jim and Mark as well. And so was that kind of surreal to you? Like, oh my God, I'm holding a comic, you know, that I colored in my hands. Do you remember? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 The first thing I ever colored that, that was in print was for preview. So how you do the solicitation art ahead of time. Uh, I did a, a backlash piece uh, over Brett Booth. 
uh, for the solicitation for backlash number one. Uh, and that was the very first thing that I got paid for at the studio that I colored and, and saw print. It wasn't a book book, but it was a, a preview of a book that was going to be coming out. And so did you feel nervous getting to work on like a comic? Like you were just given a black and white page, like, okay, you know, I have to get this right. Or did you feel any sense of pressure or were you nervous? Yeah, I think definitely initially at first it was, it was a little nervous. Uh, I was still learning how to use, um, Photoshop too. So there was yeah. a lot of, of, of the, is this going to work? Does this work? Uh, a lot of trial and error as kind of, I'm kind of working through things to try and get them done. Um, so the, the nerve, the nerve of it was also, how's it going to print? Because it was such a new medium to work digitally that, that uh, I wasn't going to, we weren't sure if it'll print too dark, too light, yeah, washed out. So a lot of trial and error early on. And I think that's the nerves were born out of that. Like, Hey, it looks great on the screen. Like we got to make sure that this, you know, replicates on paper pro properly. And so like you look back at some of your earlier work and think, Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Or I could have done that instead or anything like that. You look oh, back. Yeah. yeah. I oh, suck. God. <laughs> you look back and think, Oh God damn. You, you, How you, did these guys hire me? <laughs> <laughs> if you could time travel, you just slap young Alex in the face. God, get it right this time. All right. You see this? No wrong. Just get uh, Sharpie, uh, cross it, out. it it serves as a good kind of uh, measuring stick for for young artists say hey look i was horrible and and you know i've definitely grown as an artist and so you know don't, don't kick yourself now if you don't feel like you're up to it yet yeah and it, takes, it takes work and dedication yeah well i mean that that seems that that does seem like a lot of work so i no money investment and uh, so yeah how did dc come about how did they even like contact you or how did that all fall together so um Funny because a DC editor reached out to me and asked me if I, and actually he was a Vertigo editor. He reached out and asked if, if, um, if I was interested in coloring a series for them. And so I had to ask permission from, from homage. Uh, well, we were Wildstorm by then. So I had to ask permission from Wildstorm and, and, and ask, Hey, you know, you guys okay with me doing work for DC freelance, as long as it's, you know, on my own time afterwards. And I didn't know this at the time, but they had already been in talks to buy the studio. Ah. And so they said, yeah, that's fine. You know, as long as you just do it at home, don't bring it here. Uh, and that's kind of how my relationship with DC started with through Vertigo uh, and, ah. and, and, and uh, one of their editors who, who I did actually quite a bit of work through Vertigo until I made the jump into the, the DC characters. Uh, and, and I think the first DC book I colored was a uh, Superman and Batman, the world's finest. Uh, book oh. and uh it was cool because my first gig had my name in the credits with with bob kane and the schuster uh, family and so it was such a cool cool experience to see your name in the credits along with all these you know uh, <laughs> legends that you've read as a kid and, and fanboyed over and all that stuff you're just like play cool play cool. it's fine it's fine you, you know yeah yeah I, I knew this would happen yeah it's, it's cool, cool. Um, <laughs> So yeah, like obviously it's one thing to get to like see your comic, but then getting to hold a DC comic, was that very different to getting to hold your first actual comic book course as opposed to getting to hold a DC comic with your name on it? A little bit. I mean, because of the characters mostly. I mean, I had gone through the holding a book that Jim Lee had drawn and Scott Williams had in kind of process. And, and as a, a fan of theirs and of the medium, uh, reading something like X-Men thinking, oh, I'd love to work with these guys and have it actually happen. Uh, that was a big kind of milestone for me. So the move to the DC was great and that it, it now switched from working with certain people to working on these characters, these characters yeah. that, I, that I that I loved. Um, yeah. yeah. That I've loved actually the entire time. And so like that, you said that was a Batman and Superman World's Finest book. And so mm -hmm. did you get to color both Batman and Superman? Yeah, both of them. Wow. Yeah. I've like I've your just, first DC books, like it's not bad. It could be doing worse, you know. Yeah, no, jumped into the deep end. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, unfortunately, they didn't give you like a great character like Condiment King or something. So I mean, you had to, you had to kind of pull out straws when it came to Superman, but and Batman, but you know, uh, maybe if you if you work hard or someday you'll get that Condiment King uh, mini series. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, so did you like obviously Batman and Superman? They're two, they're two big characters. And you've gotten to draw, you've gotten to color them in comics such as Batman Hush, the Justice League. You've gotten so did you try and ever draw parallels? between the two because superman can kind of take up a page like with his colors and then batman's kind of dark and moody so did you ever try and draw parallels between the two 
yeah i mean it was def- very obvious to me as far as like characters uh when we did hush and, and the, the way we approached that character and and the city and all that and then when we moved on to superman for tomorrow we almost did a like a 160 and and, and we went from you know gritty and textured everything to to slick clean and bright uh so the, there's definitely a a lot of contrast between the two characters so that when you bring them together you you play one off the other to yeah. to, to, to definitely pop them and, and and make them you know work together uh as a composition in each in each panel in each page and i believe you got to color that image where it's like batman standing against superman and batman's in gotham it's like it's like one page and like they're both standing there was that that was you right yeah that was justice league the first yeah. issue of justice league yeah and so like obviously they're both there and batman's kind of dark and moody and like superman's obviously bright and happy so did you try and go for that look to make batman look as kind of gritty as possible and for superman to look as optimistic as possible always absolutely and so like like is batman do you kind of make gotham a character in a sense because you've gotten to obviously color gotham a lot so do you try and like do a lot with it making it kind of neon bright or anything like that yeah definitely definitely uh, and that's something that we discussed and, and went for in in hush is like hey the city is a character too we gotta you know make it part of, of the story and, and and helps with the storytelling and becomes like an extra character on the scene yeah we were like oh man i want to color batman i don't want to draw these buildings god damn oh, i'm so sick of this why are so many buildings you just kind of oh, so much fun to work on, on, uh, on you could just silhouette them at the very least, you know, uh, shadow, 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 you know, I'm a colorist, you know, I know how it works, uh, shadow, where's the shadow coming from? Eh, stare, stare. Um, so yeah, you brought up Batman Hush, how did that even come about? Because that's gone on to be like one of the biggest Batman stories. It's easy to say one time, it's so many people's favorites. Uh, so how did Batman uh, Hush come about? Did you get an email from Jim Lee that said, you want to work on us with this book or anything like that? Actually, yeah, um, Jim and Scott both came to me and they said, hey, uh, I'd been working on Harley Quinn with with uh, Kiesel and the Dodsons and and um, and uh, Jim and Scott said, hey, we really like what you've been doing on, on Harley Quinn. We're, we're going to be doing a, a Batman 12 issue series. Would you like to color, you know, work with us and color it? And I was like, like I'm going to say no. Right? Uh, <laughs> now you're all so right. So we actually did a, a one of the Stan Lee uh books the wonder woman's uh, stan lee book so the jim scott and i kind of were that was kind of our 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 dress rehearsal for hush and then we kind of worked out kinks in the approach to hush in that book uh and kind of build that chemistry ahead of time so that when i picked up that first issue it wasn't like a an abrupt change we'd already kind of gotten you know 32 pages out of the out, under our belt together uh, and that's kind of where the 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 relationship between the three of us was born out of. Uh, I mean, that's when it really started as an exclusive kind of uh, uh, collaboration between the three of us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And so Batman Hush, has, of course, gone on to be such an like, iconic comic. So do you ever think that while coloring that, that it would go on to be what it is today? Um, you know, everything felt right when we were working on it. I mean. Uh, Jim's pencils were just off the charts and Scott was killing it on inks. And, and anytime that I felt tired or burnt out, all I had to do was walk down the hall and, and either see Scott inking a new page uh, or Jim drawing the next issue. The, the, it really just kind of like reignited the, the, the spark. And, and, wow. and so it, everything felt right. Reading the scripts by Jeff, it, it all felt like it was going to be a good product, but obviously nothing that we felt that was going to become one of the the top selling Batman series of all time. And so it, yeah. it's humbling uh, looking back on it, but, but at the time we were just kind of like, let's make this as, as the best book that we can. Uh, and it, it felt right at the, at the, at the time. There's a lack of condiment King, but you know, you can't win them all. So uh, maybe next yeah, all, it was only 12 issues. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he's in the background somewhere, just in one, but there's a hot dog cart, and like, that's probably canon that he, Condiment King does make an appearance, and so you brought up this point that you would walk down and see, like, Jim drawing a page, or Scott inking, so were you all in, like, the one building while making this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. so we were still all, all, all at Wildstorm, and, and it, you know, we all had our offices, and we just would just literally walk from one office to the other uh, to check what everybody was doing. 
Wow. And like, so was that like, was that easy for the three of you to work together? Because like Jim could look in over your shoulder and say, yeah, very good. I like that. Oh, you should get rid of that. Or no, 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 you should do that. Or was it like, so did you all kind of work together very tightly when it came to Batman Hush? Yeah, we always have. Uh, every page that we, that each of us does, we show it to each other. Yeah. Uh, so when Jim pencils a cover, he'll send Scott and I a JPEG of it. And then Scott will link and send the JPEG to everybody. And then I'll do the same. And we're always, you know, making sure that, you know, that's part of the collaborations that we're all, we're all contributing. And we're also, you know, open to comments from everybody just to make sure that the finished piece looks the best that it can. And so, of course, in that comic, there were a lot of like really badass moments, like friggin' Superman fought Batman, like w- under control, poison ivy, just like awesome. And so, what was your favorite thing that you've gotten to color in that story? Was there one moment that you liked the most? Um, there's questions. been a few. I mean, the uh, a bunch of the covers for sure. Yeah. Uh, the the reveal of uh, of Todd. Um, uh, he was and- condiment king the whole time. <laughs> Oh my God, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I knew we had to get him in there somewhere. Whew. Uh, so all, there's a lot of really cool moments. Uh, there's certain like specific pages that I love. The, the Batman c- crashing through into the opera house with Harley Quinn in the foreground. Uh, that entire issue of uh, 614 where Batman's just beating the tar out of the Joker for, you know, for 20 pages. Uh, <laughs> all that. It, it all kind of it's the little pieces that that make it great that add up to the to the whole series but and um, so yeah. yeah getting to draw batman and superman fighting no i mean sorry yeah. getting color what was that like get the color down fighting like was that fun for you uh, that was fun growing up my brother was always the superman fan and i was the batman fan and we'd always fight over who would win in a fight and so when i finished that page i sent him a a jpeg of it say here you go <laughs> ah you suck i'm right i've waited 20 years for this <sighs> i mean i I'm, i was really resisting the year to make a comment that condom and could be both of them but i just i kept it in so uh i think i deserve some respect for that for everyone watching and so yeah that was actually turned into an animated film batman hush so yes. to see your work turn into like well something that you worked on turn into a film was that odd um it was a little bittersweet I was excited about it. Uh, I heard they changed part of the story. Uh, and the animation, I think, was a little off, in my opinion, to what the the look of the book. I mean, it's 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 virtually impossible to do an animated movie that looks like a gym drawing throughout uh, because yeah. of the amount of detail that he adds to to every everything that he does. And so, um, you know, I liked it. I think it could have been better, um, especially with the uh, the great record that that uh dc animation has had before going into that with all their other movies yeah of course and so like batman hush the main villain is of course hush and so like did you have a hand in what type of colors went into him or did jim lee just give you the sketch and say all right this should be brown this should be black or anything like that it was just guy with a trench coat he's got bandages on his face so it's it's a (laughs) (laughs) no-brainer so i make it rainbow colored i imagine at the front just to make sure it's all okay and then of course we ended up getting i think they might have uh, the editors might have taken that out so uh, um so yeah like batman hush of course that's an amazing comic um but of course another comic you worked on transitioning very smoothly you're not even going to notice i changed topics you also got to work on batman flashpoint which i also <coughs> reviewed on the channel if you'd like to go check that out everyone uh, but you also got to work on batman uh, flashpoint so what was that like i mean yeah just flashpoint god i'm getting all these different comics you worked on mixed up <laughs> got to work on flashpoint what was that like uh, flashpoint was a blast you know uh mostly the story jeff came up with such a great concept uh you know the altering of the the future of of, uh, of dc comics and and uh i especially liked what he did with with batman or with with bruce and thomas wayne that was such a cool little hook to to to, to add to the story and and so it was fun in that we were kind of rewriting history with it or jeff was rewriting it and, and artistically andy sandra and i were kind of you know putting that to paper and and it was it was it was fun it was hard in that we were redesigning everything so it was coming up with with color schemes for every character uh throughout and so there was a lot of work put in the background uh, behind the scenes to make sure that it looked you know as, as good as possible and yeah that's another point i wanted to talk about of course these are all parallel versions of said characters like aquaman wonder woman at war uh, mm-hmm. Batman is actually Thomas Wayne and there's all these different types of subplots 
Um, so did you try, like, because you've obviously gotten to actually draw most of the core members for Justice, oh, I'm sorry, Colour, I keep on getting that mixed up, but you got to colour most of the core members for Justice League. And um, so did you think, because obviously you've done it, so did you try and create, kind of make it as alternate, as, as different as possible when it came to, like, make this look as different as possible with, uh, from Batman without really breaking it too much or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it, you, you change here and there, but not too much. Uh, yeah. Some of the character designs were being done uh, by other artists as well. So I was getting the, the color schemes from them as already uh, until I got to do on my own. So there's a little bit of both. Um, but the, yeah, when you're, when you're kind of redesigning it, you, you, you almost bring with like your, your own feelings of, oh, when I was a kid, I thought it'd be cool if, you know, <laughs> Aquaman had a red tunic instead of an orange tunic because it's like orange in the ocean, really. <laughs> so um, that kind of stuff. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, anything that you end up doing it has to make sure that, you know, the editorial signs off on it uh, and, and looks as, as good as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And like one page that I especially liked, I think it was the first time we ever got to see the Thomas Wayne Batman. It was kind of like the double spread of him jumping throughout Gotham and you could see in the background, it was like chef's kiss. And I thought that just looks <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, so another, do you have a favorite alternate version of any of the characters? Because there's like obviously Skinny Superman. I'm just going to call him Skinny Superman because he's just and then there's a, uh, like Aquaman versus Wonder Woman and like Batman and there's all these alternate versions of said characters so do you have a favorite alternate version or maybe just in other genres like the Elseworld stories or it was just you just have a favorite alternate version of a character well I love the um I uh, from that from Flashpoint definitely the Aquaman and and Thomas Wayne Batman I think probably my two favorite of, of yeah. everything there I really I really like what Jeff did with them uh but those two stick out the most I mean, of course, Clayface was a pirate, which is like friggin' badass. Because of course he'd be a pirate. That's like the best part of the whole story. You know, like give me a, just give me a mini series of him just going around doing pirate things. You know, yeah. like, you're literally you're sitting on a gold mine here, uh, DC. But yeah, so there's been some talks about that being adapted into a film. But would you like to see Flashpoint be turned into a live film? And would that kind of be odd for you to get to see a comic you colored adapted into film? That'd be cool. I think they also did an animated movie of it. I haven't watched it. Um, yes. I think it was a Justice League movie, though. I think it was called Justice League: The Flashpoint Effect or something like that. Didn't I haven't watched it yet. Uh, there's talks that the the Flash movie will be a a Flashpoint plot, so I, it'd be cool to see it. I'm excited. My face as a pirate better be in it. Oh my god, I'm gonna boycott the <laughs> hell out of this film. Release the that movie. might not make it. <laughs> ah, but it was the best part. It's the most integral part of the story. It tied it all together. It's goddamn DC changing things. <laughs> back, in, back in my day we, we got clayface as a pirate you know so that's right that's right that's right you know we have to we have to get that trending on uh, twitter so yeah obviously flashpoint so did like flash is the main character so did you try and keep him as to the original design as possible would the characters around him be different right so yes. that was the one constant was that flash was flash barry was yeah. there and he he needed to figure out how to fix it and then of course uh, the reverse flash costume and like so of course it was reverse flash normal flash um, but the, like, the one thing I wanted to ask you, especially when it comes to all these different characters, is that if a character is like completely green, like Killer Croc, who's also getting uh, colored, and like Flash, who's just mostly red, it, do, you try, like, do you lay out the flats and then try and like, make it look different shades of red? Or do you try and make a character, like even if it's a character that's just like one basic color, and you try and make it like, look as flashy as possible? Flashy as possible? Nice. <laughs> so so like, I, I always start every character with the, the same color for their suit, skin, eyes, hair, cape, whatever. And then I'll wash it with ambient light so that if, you know, there it's nighttime, then I'll use, and it's, I'm using purple for the sky. I'm actually washing purple over the entire character so that he yeah. feels like he's part of that environment. And then, and then from there, I'll start to light it depending on what's, so if it's a spotlight, I'll use that, that warm light to light the, the you know, whatever side that that light's hitting. And then I'll bring in some of that purple back and reflect some of it onto the back of the character to, to, to anchor him on that in that environment yeah absolutely and like flashpoint another thing that like there was a lot of running and then there was a lot of blue stripes and zigzags and i was sitting there oh god damn i don't know how alex did that because that looks <laughs> so painful the color but like so did you have to color in like every zigzag every blue little line yeah. oh thing. yeah that's all part of it and uh, flash is such a fun character to work with but he's probably the hardest because of his his, his movement and his speed uh, I worked with him before Flashpoint on Blackest Night, 
and uh, I decided to ghost him as he was moving and it ended up looking amazing but it, it was so painful uh, <laughs> it, was, it took so much time to, to get it to look right uh, but it, it's, I think it's probably my favorite work on Flash is the, the, what I did on Blackest Night because of that did, and did DC not give you a medal for that or a trophy for doing that? <laughs> Actually, you know, I did get nominated for an Eisner for the for Blackest Night. Wow, I, I'm sure that was their way of saying, good job, to give you a little pat <laughs> on the head, give you a cookie, just push you away. Good, good job. Now go do another book. Yeah, so that, yeah, they did give me a cookie, no trophy, just a cookie. <laughs> a cookie and a trophy. There, Alex, that's you paid for the next week or so. <laughs> go color another page. Um, so yeah, Flashpoint, you've obviously gotten to work on so many uh, different comics, but like I said, Flashpoint, what is your one favorite definitive Flashpoint moment? Like, it's probably a hard one, but what's that one moment that makes you think, oh, that's so awesome? I love the, uh, the, when they're trying to get Barry's powers back with the lightning storm. Oh, and, yes. And Batman and the electric chair. That That's such a cool, uh, just the concept of it. That, you know, kudos to to Jeff for coming up with that and, and, and Andy for drawing the heck out of that. And then he gets almost incinerated, which must have been yeah. very fun for you to color. Thank God they wrapped him in bandages or you would have to done every kind of flesh mark or anything like that. I think for the most part, though, there was some flesh marks, but God damn, you were probably like, thank you, thank you, Kubert, for, you know, just color covering this in bandages because I would have actually cried if you had to do it. Seems to be a lot of bandages in your work. That's odd enough. You know, That's Batman, right. Flashpoint. It's like one of those things that just keeps on coming to you. Like the bandages in this get Alex on it. The universe is telling me something. <laughs> <laughs> what, what Could have been a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> what, what it's telling you, we're not too sure about. Yeah, no. But then again, would a doctor have gotten to color flash? No, 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 exactly. So, you know, uh, so pick your battles. Um, so, yeah, like you also got to work on the Justice League and that's some of my favorite work on yours. I actually have a uh, Justice League comic you signed for me, friend in my room. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Justice League, how did that come about? Were you a fan of the Justice League growing up? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I watched the Super Friends and, the, you know, growing up when I was a kid and, and read the Justice League books and had worked on, on, on Justice League of America with Brad Meltzer uh, and at Venice before and, and this came um, I think you know Jeff and Jim wanted to work together on a project and and the new 52 was about to get launched and they figured yeah. what, what better way to do this than you know it, it became the uh, the main title launch of the new 52 Justice League was the main title that came out of that and, and uh, so it was just kind of you know Jim's doing it Scott and I are most likely a part of that and we kind of jumped on and, and and worked on that uh, yeah. so it's cool it's cool to work on it it's very it's cool seeing some of what we did in the book show up in the movie uh and so it's, it's it, you know always fun to 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 be an inspiration for for something else down the line yeah absolutely and uh, i'd say the flash seems to come up in your work a lot and you're like god please if he's running in the script i'm gonna cry like please don't please don't please you just turn over the page <laughs> and you're like god damn you ah oh. Just have to like email the editor. No running an exclamation mark. Um, but yeah, so the new 52, you touched on that. That was like a really big event. And that's kind of what I know comics as because my first ever interaction with comics were kind of like re re regards into new 52 because I saw those graphic novels. And so how did you find out about the new 52? Like uh, they just, uh, I think through Justice League, Jim yeah. told us, hey, they're, we're relaunching the whole line. It's going to be called new 52. And you're going to be on, you know, you're going to be on, on Justice League. Uh, and wow. I was actually working on, um harley quinn was launching as well and so i became part of the the harley quinn team uh and then green lantern uh from issue two on i was brought in to do green lantern for the new 52 as well wow and so like of course the justice league they're all kind of integral members so did you have to go through much designs on how to get their colors right and say no maybe that orange doesn't work as well for aquaman or maybe that doesn't work as well or anything like that um i did kind of i i stepped in and 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 did most of the colors like um obviously this is when when superman was brought in and without the trunks um Ooh. and in my initial color sketch I, I had him with the red belt and dc's note was like make the belt gold uh and i actually kind of i actually kind of resisted that i said look gold's gonna really stand out and the it's it's all blue and then a gold belt your eyes are going to go to his belt instead of his chest or his, or his eyes. Uh, so we sent them samples of, of what the gold belt and the red belt would look like. And, you know, thankfully the, the red belt 
one out. Uh, one of the things that we didn't get to keep was Wonder Woman wore the, the, the Navy pants with the stars on them. Oh. That was the initial design that I loved and, and it never made it to print. Yeah. Uh, and like you gave Batman a shirt that said, I heard Condom and King and they cut that out as well, which is like, God damn DC. You're on a roll <laughs> putting out God, like pirate clay face, Condom and King. <sighs> you know, it, it just happens like that. And so yeah, like, was it more of a challenge for you? Like, is there a difference between coloring a book with a regular character or a team book? Like, cause you have to kind of make each member look unique and kind of try and blend them all together in some sense. So is there more trouble in coloring a team book? Yeah, team books are a lot harder to work with really? because they're all using their powers and everybody's got to, so you, you you start to introduce multiple light sources that way and yeah. multiple color uh, influencing uh, powers. So it's, it's definitely harder than, than a uh, you know, single character book. And so is that hard for you when there's all these different characters with different light sources and you kind of have to track the page and make sure that everything's intact and make sure that everything kind of works together? Yeah. And when you draw that, when they're being drawn and, and they're overlapping uh, and they have the same color. So when green arrow is in front of green lantern, you know, you definitely have to concern yourself with making sure that the, the greens are different and you're using the right lighting to, to pop one from the other. And so who's your favorite member of the justice league? Batman. Batman 100%. And now here's another hard hitting question. If you could, if you could add an additional member to the justice league in the whole DC universe, who would it be? Besides Condom and King and Pirate Clayface, because of course those are the obvious those ones. Those are yours. Of course they're mine. <laughs> no, 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 I make them their own team, right? And then they all become pirates in some weird way, and we all tie it together. It's funny. Well, it's funny because you know over the years the Justice League has added so many different characters that it's, it's hard to like reach out and pluck somebody and say, "Hey, all right, we're gonna." That hasn't already been tapped for it. I, I mean, I always loved when Firestorm joined the Justice oh, yeah. League. That was such a cool thing um who else i love the hawks the hawks were always cool i'm trying to think if there's anybody that i worked on that 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 i thought hey let's he'd be great in the justice league because they'd literally been all put there except for <laughs> like, nightwing and donna troy <laughs> oh you see i'm asking the hard-hitting questions here there's so many but firestorm there's obviously like some source of light coming off the big fire burning out his head so i mean he probably he probably wouldn't be too fun to do because color and fire have you gotten to color fire uh, yeah, Firestorm. I we did. Uh, he was in the um, the Brad Meltzer, uh, Justice okay. League of America run. Wow. So he's been. He was. Yeah, and he's one of the characters that I. That his series came out when I was young, and so I, I really enjoyed reading that. And so another hard hitting question I have here: If you could see Justice League go up against any other team in the history of comic books or films, or who would it be? Oh well, this, there was the Justice League X Men book that oh, came out way cool. back when uh, that was so great uh so something like that would be great to see x-men of course wolverine and batman would become best friends of course or, or they'd either yeah. they'd either become best friends or kill each other straight away so it's like you know you just you kind of have to it's like watching a nature documentary you have to see how it plays out you know just let them kind of mark out the territory and see how that all ends up uh, falling together um, and yeah. so yeah of course getting to work on the justice league got to work on so many uh, other characters but have you gotten to work on like Sing, single comics for most of the main characters of the Justice League. Have you gone to color them? Yeah, so I think uh, I, I did a few runs on Wonder Woman. Uh, Green Lantern is probably the one character that I've colored the most now. Um, wow. That's a Justice League member. Uh, Harley Quinn is definitely the character that I've worked on the most. Um, really? Uh, but Batman, Superman, a little bit of Flash, not too much. Uh, yeah. Even did some Hawkman too, so... <laughs> Of course, you have to do. Yeah, Hawkman is just naturally thrown in there. Um, but yeah, so you brought up uh, Harley Quinn as well. So you did you actually get to draw Harley Quinn? I mean, sorry, color Harley Quinn a lot? Yeah, so I, wow. I, I actually worked on her in 1999 when that original series came out. Or 2000, it was 2000 when that first series came out. Wow. Uh, so I worked on her for, I think the series ran for about four years, so 48 issues. I, I colored probably about 40 of those, 48 issues. Uh, and then when the relaunch with Jimmy and Amanda uh, came out with Chad Harding art drawing it, um, I jumped on from that first issue. Uh, and I did most of the run with Jimmy and Amanda writing. Uh, and so, like I said, that's the one character that I probably worked on the most in my career. 
Yeah, wow. And like, do you have uh, color palettes for a character? Like, you save colors, like, okay, Batman's cape should be this color, you know, or Wonder Woman's hair should be this color. And do you save colors for said character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I have very, very character specific, very book specific palettes. Yeah, and do you keep it up for continuity? Like, you kind of have to keep the same colors going on for page for page. And like, yep. have you ever accidentally chose a different color and you're like, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that? Or are you very clean about it? You're very neat. Yeah, I mean, I, it always, like I said, it, it starts with the exact same color and then I and then I mess with it. Yeah, wow, exactly. And so, like, of course, for you, so you're going to be some, see some more of my brilliant uh, Harley Quinn uh, transition skills, but you also got to work in the Suicide Squad as well. Correct. Yeah, and yeah, so we, Suicide Squad, they're we, like a like, I think it was a six issue that Jim Scott and I worked on. Um, and, and so that was, uh, it was fun. I think it was a, in, it was coming out because the movie was, had been announced. And so that we were trying to launch the series right around when the, the movie came out. Uh, so we were working on it uh, together. Yeah. It was, it's a fun series. It was, it was very brief, but again, hard to work on just because of the, uh, the, the multiple characters, uh, also characters that you're not familiar with. So like, you know, I'd, I'd worked with, you know, Superman, Batman, Flash, whatever, for so many times that yeah. now you, you're like, okay, Captain Boomerang. And uh, it's like, uh, all right, I'm not sure how to, you kind of have to get used to the little nuances of the, of the suit and the colors for the character and then make sure that they work. Uh, Harley, I had nailed down, no problem, but everybody else was like, okay. What, what color is Captain Boomerang's boomerang? Like, God damn, you know, it could be anything. Ah, screw yep. God, DC. That's how they get you, you know, especially with the <laughs> boomerangs. You know, I think it's all part of their a long plan. And so, yeah, the Suicide Squad, like I said, of course, I transitioning just like Suicide Squad. Do you have a favorite member, Suicide Squad? Harley. Harley. Although, Killer Sharks, you know, close second. <laughs> of course. Because, of course, he, he just has to be him. But he's, like, a completely green character. Uh, so, like I said, did you have to kind of add shade in or something just to not make sure that he was completely green? Or add right. Well, actually, you know, Killer Shark wasn't in the series that we did. Uh, Killer Croc was. And, oh, and yeah. Sorry. I, I so, like Croc. Trying to get, get uh, him. I like the, the characters that are very animal-centric, like Killer Croc, Killer Shark. Uh, you know, even, like, when you have Crypto on a cover, I go nuts. It's just, uh, I, I really like, love painting and drawing wildlife yeah i've talked about king shark so much that like whenever i think of the suicide squad the king shark it's just muscle memory i bring him up and it's like you'd be surprised how much he comes up in regular life like who i'm not even gonna <laughs> like he just he just comes up so naturally like i didn't even know i was talking about him there yeah i think i've, I've had him lasered in my brain uh, for some while now but of course you also got to work on superman a lot and so like superman did you try do you always try and make superman this big optimistic and happy character well, it depends on the story uh, and how it's written. When we did for tomorrow, that he was a very conflicted character, uh, and so yeah. we, we needed to really pump up the mood in in that. Uh, and so Brian Azarella, who wrote that, was very much about writing a Superman story that wasn't like every other Superman story, and, and we definitely wanted to kind of uh, go along with that and make sure that we represented that visually. And and so. Um, with him, the palettes were very um, character centric. What I did with For Tomorrow was that every time a specific character was in the scene, the, the, the exact same kind of dominant color showed up. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, the villain, whenever the villain was around, the words reds around. Whenever Superman's around, purple was the main kind of dominating color. Uh, when Batman came in, everything went dark and, and, and green. And so that that's kind of how I tackled that and that each character brought its own palette. Uh, and then when we did uh, Unchained, I think we it was a more hopeful kind of uh, action kind of story. And yes. so with that, I just kind of we I went with my more, I guess, usual palette uh, where it's, it's more story centric than it is character centric. So I let the story dictate what was I going to what I was going to do with the with the the color and the mood yeah and so you've gotten to draw like i uh, sorry you got into color like characters like superman but you've also gotten color batman in a lot of different things like batman hush uh flashpoint uh justice league so do you have like just do you stick to the same kind of color uh for batman like you always have the same color for him like the kind of gray or is it different it depends on the book well it depends on the book and the time and so that his yes yeah. i prefer the batman with the gray tunic and the blue dark blue cape um, but you know, in recent times, he really has, he's 
gray tunic and a black cape. And so I, I have to make sure that I adhere to the, the palette that's, that's established for that particular run. Uh, but if it's anything that, that I can do whatever I want, and if it's like a variant cover or anything that is, isn't really like very story centric, he's going to have a blue cape. And so like, of course, you've also gotten to work in a few different stories, but actually Frank Miller uh, himself. So like, were you a Frank Miller fan growing up? He's a, yeah, I don't think he's gotten to work in much big comics, nothing, nothing too big, and not like Dark Knight Re- Re- Returns, I believe it's called. Sorry, yeah. it slips a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's probably some, some old comic. No, I'm only asking. Um, so yeah, like, so were you a fan of Frank Miller growing up? Yeah. I, I, like I said, we read uh, his Daredevil runs were huge. Yeah. We loved them. Uh, and uh, so when Dark Knight Returns came out, that I think that's one of the moments when I, I, I read the book and I said, uh, I would love to work in something. In a, in a medium that, that that creates this kind of art this kind of product wow. so i became an instant uh diehard frank miller fan at the time and, and thought you know man if, if i could work on on something like this down the line as a pro i that that's it that's my dream so i owe a lot to frank as, a, as an inspiration and then now as a uh, as a professional and, and a collaborator and to have gotten to work with him in in, in many different books and especially two of his babies uh, that are dark knight and you know the 300 kind of uh Xerxes, which, which is linked 300 uh, it's you know dream come true for me yeah and so like what was your first work with frank miller what did we do first um batman and robin was it yes and, yeah. and so that was our first collaboration it was as, as writer and colorist and 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 since we've gotten to work as artist and colorist together, and so that's been, it's been cool in that, uh, as much as I enjoyed the the writer colorist relationship, I really love the 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 relationship we built as as fellow artists uh, when I color his work. It's, it's it's always a fun and a challenge to to work on his stuff because it's so iconic, it's so dynamic that uh, I I still I still kind of have to sit back and really think it through before I jump on on anything that, he, that I'm going to color over him. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, not only did you have to work on uh, that with uh, Frank, you also got to work on Superman Year One, I believe. Correct. Wow, what yeah. was that like? That was fantastic. The story was so great. Uh, John Romita and Danny Mickey with their artwork, just, just I love that story. Uh, and and the format was, was incredible. Uh, it was cool to work with John Romita. Uh, Frank was doing some of the covers too. So I got to color Frank on the book that he wrote. That was cool too. So um, a lot of really cool memories and, and, and moments with Superman. And I think that that kind of launched my, you know, how I always have, I, how I said that, that, that I always loved Batman more, way more than Superman. Yeah. I think Superman year one kind of started to bring Superman up to level mm-hmm. with, with Batman because right after year one, we did the, uh, the Superman run with Brian Bendis and Ivan Rice and, and Joe Prado. And, and I, I, that's probably the proudest work I've done in, in recent years. So you were on the phone with your brother, like, okay, you are right. Your Superman's not that bad. You know, you know, I'll give you this, I'll let us try just this once. Um, but yeah, so like Superman, I believe that wasn't his traditional suit in that story. Correct. It was, it was a little a little combination of, of the original one and, and the current suit. Yeah, and I think he was rather young in that story, maybe yeah. 20. Yeah, it's it's his origin story. It's a it's a, a new a, a new telling of his origin. And so did you try and differentiate his suit from like the big iconic Superman suit that we all know today? Uh Frank, Frank and I actually are, are big fans of the, the Fleischer cartoons. Ah. And so we he's like make sure that the blue is that blue, make sure that the red is that red, the Fleischer red, the Fleischer blue. And, and so I ended up, you know, buying the, the, the Fleischers and watching them and watching them and watching them to get the, the feel of the, of not only the color of the suit, but how they would kind of interact with their environment. So that when I colored it, I was kind of borrowing from the, from the, the animated, uh, those animated uh, shorts, uh, to, to, to you can, would get kind of a little bit of that feel 
Yeah, absolutely. And like, so now let's talk a little bit, a little bit about color. So when you are given a page, what's the first thing you do? How do you approach coloring a page? Like just say you're given a black and white page. What's the first thing you do? Well, if it's going to be interiors, what I'll do is I'll read the script as I'm looking at each page. So I'll, I'll have the page open and read the, the script for that particular page. And I'll go through that for the entire book. And what I'm doing at that moment is I'm starting to build the palettes in my head that I'm going to use for that particular uh, series. Uh, I'm also starting to break down the story into scenes to make sure that each scene has a palette that's, that is um, consistent. So that yeah. if the story is written broken up where, where you know, this particular scene appears broken up throughout the story, I want to make sure that when you come back to that scene, it's lit exactly like that other page was so that visually you know that you're going back to that to that particular part of the story. Uh, so that's that's what I'll do. I'll break it down into like just general scenes and, 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 and general palettes. And then once that's done, I'll start to color the, the scene and, and break it down into more detailed palette uh, um, decisions, whether yeah. it's I'm only going to light this with one light. I'm going to double light this, I'm going to triple light this. I'm going to go monochromatic. I'm going to go palette limited, all that kind of stuff or decisions that I make, you know, per scene based on the, the script. Yeah, absolutely. For covers, for covers, since, you know, uh, you're going for pop, you're going for, for yeah. attention grabbing. And so you tend to cheat a little bit of the color theory, theory rule so that you, your stuff really jumps out. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, of course, like, there's so many different characters. And one character, I can imagine he's such a pain to color as Green Lantern because, of course, he's, like, just such a bright character that, like, he shines on literally every surface. And so, like, for Green Lantern, have you noticed that he straight up just shines everywhere? Well, his, what's hard about Green Lantern is, is the constructs that he builds. Uh, ah. So uh, I've always thought that uh, growing up when I was reading the, the, the character, I always thought that his constructs shouldn't look solid because they're made out of light. And so one of the things that, that, that we established in Justice League was his constructs are semi-transparent. Uh, and so that the holding lines also are like light, made of light. And so yeah. that um, there was a lot of, of playing that. Uh, what makes it hard is that I end up having to color behind them so that when I make them semi-transparent, you can wow. still see the background or, or character, or whatever's behind it. And so that's what that's what makes it hard is that it's very labor intensive. Uh, but in the end, it's 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 so much fun. I love doing constructs uh, right. because because of that part of them uh, i also hate doing them because it just takes so long to do yeah and like so does it take a while for you to finish coloring a construct yeah yeah and, and it's mostly because i uh, in the setup i have to you know separate the construct out into a separate layer and then paint underneath it and then bring the layer back in at a you know at a lower opacity and then color that and then make it glow make it you know make it look like it's it, it's physical but semi-transparent too yeah absolutely and so like of course there's so many different characters but who's a character that's your favorite character to color that you could just never get sick of coloring um batman's always fun to do really i've always i've always loved doing batman um uh other characters i found that i really i really enjoyed coloring hawkman uh, really wow uh, just the feathers the, the <laughs> opportunity to do like the the, te the texture on the feathers um I'm trying to think so i you know i initially didn't really enjoy superman but now i love coloring superman uh wonder woman i love the new suit um uh, the, the previous incarnation was she's hard to color because there's so much skin uh and so skin's one of the things that we as humans know so well that if we don't do it properly it stands out and so that when you face with that much skin all the time it, you, there's that kind of uh, the hesitation lies in that you want to make sure that you get it right because if you don't people will know because if if you know uh, her tunic or her chest plate if it's not done right well it's like well we're not sure what it's made of so okay yeah that looks fine but anytime you do human skin you know folks will know god damn you alex sinclair this is like it's it's not it's not good enough you know uh, i'm sure that's not a problem you seem to encounter uh, too much um, so, and <laughs> yeah, when it came to especially characters like that 
have you ever noticed that you maybe start off with character and like okay I don't know if I can really get the hang of this character or if I can make it stand out but then over time you can like oh okay now I know this character I have this character nailed I can completely know how to color this yeah I think I I actually enjoy the challenge really uh, if it's a character I've never done before or they change the costume and it's something different like the Spider-Man stuff I just did I was like oh wow like it's nothing like the old costume and that's to me that's like that that sparks the inspiration it's like okay, cool something completely new to work with yeah. uh, and I have to throw away all the oh if I ever do Spider-Man this is what I would do you know that all kind of goes out the door because his suit's completely different and, and so it's cool because it's it, it is different it's cool because it's it's that challenge that you you know uh, that you have to live up to yeah and so like of course challenges like uh, so getting to work with Marvel do you feel like that's opened you up to a whole new different realm of characters to color yeah I'm excited really and like what, what's a marvel character you'd like to color but you haven't really gotten a chance to well anyone except spider-man <laughs> <laughs> are you sick of him already you're like oh no, I'm, four issues. I'm saying that, uh, like i said growing up i would love i mean daredevil is one of my favorite characters of all time i would love to do a, a daredevil series uh the x-men have always been great um and uh other than that like thor is great captain america would be fun to do iron man i'm just thinking of all these characters that that uh, I've read as a kid and as an adult. And, and now that uh, hopefully uh, the folks at Marvel like my work enough that they, I can kind of make the transition, uh, not just for, to Spider-Man, but from Spider-Man into other kind of uh, characters. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to come up with kind of a condiment king, condiment king, you know, pirate clayface esque character that I could bring up, but you know, of course, from Marvel. Yeah, unfortunately, they only have characters like Captain America and Iron Man. No one really as big as condiment king or you know clayface. So uh, maybe one day, maybe now that you're here, you can help make some actual big characters and give give Marvel a chance. You know. Yep. Yeah, it's it's just in your charitable kind, uh, good willing nature, and um, but yeah, so like of course, do you have you noticed improvement as like an as a colorist over time? Like, do you think that you've slowly gotten better, and like even now you're still learning new things? Yeah, I think as an artist, you always strive to improve. Uh, there's always we are our worst critics, and so we're the first ones to find the 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 error or the not quite perfectly rendered part that you missed that, that drives you to the next one to make sure that you don't do that again and so you're always striving to improve i think uh when i go from series to series i change my style a little bit i think that uh i like to adapt to the artist as opposed to just oh. kind of slap color on it so that my style over frank is completely different than my style over jim that is completely different than my style over over anybody else amanda connor right and it's because their styles are kind of deserve uh, a unique uh, approach to them yeah and so if you kind of notice differences between the like the artists you work on like some will do that and some will do this and like some, right. yeah so if you notice differences between all the artists you've gotten to work with oh yeah yeah and if you look at the way i color each of them it's it, everyone's different from the other oh so do you adjust your way depending on the artist wow yeah. And so, like, another comic that I didn't bring up that I believe you're working with was Under the Hood. Yes. Yeah, uh, that was, like, the first uh, kind of Red Hood graphic novel, or just comics, depending on when you read it. But what was it like to get to working Under the Hood? That was cool. I mean, it was a continuation of, of, of the Hush character, where Jason Todd yeah. becomes Red Hood. And, uh, and yeah, again, one of those things, you how you, know, you never know what's going to happen, and it, yeah. Red Hood becomes this this great character that DC now uh, it appears on, on, on you know, a lot of series a uh, very popular character a lot of folks kind of gravitate towards red hood yeah and so like it was a fun feature because color's helmet yeah yeah was that the part because it was like I, luckily it wasn't too shiny so it wasn't such pain because it was like it, you know it wasn't metallic or anything like that because if the reflection was there in every panel you'd be like oh my god just take well, off the yeah. mask. we all know you're jason todd Come on, just give it a break Oh, just making it yeah, that was the first question i'm like how shiny is this helmet gonna be <laughs> <laughs> uh can we change it a little bit you know how about and it's just it's just a wild idea and just trying out there we get rid of the helmet you know um but of course i think that's the reason i mean if it comes to someone like condiment king you know you wouldn't have to put in much effort mustard very easy to color uh ketchup very easy i'm trying to pitch you my series here if anyone, i'll send you my 800 page script later uh, you'll you'll fly by it, it, it you get so hooked in the story it's about like a ketchup storage 
and oh my god you know yeah you don't see half of it coming um but of course so uh, my last few questions um if you could do a comic with any character in the whole realm or just color uh any character who would it be and why uh, what's the title you haven't gotten to work on that you'd like to? Well, I think it, it, it also, for me, it's become, um, what I do a certain character if, uh, I think there's certain people as artists that if they were working on whatever character, I'd go with them no matter what. So if, if awesome. Jim ever drew, if Jim ever said he was going to do the Jetsons, then I would be doing the Jetsons because I knew that he'd bring so much energy to something like that, that I would be love to do it. Uh, so I think it would be what character would I love to work on? It'd be like, well, who's drawing it for me? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, and there's so many artists that I, that I've gotten to work with that I'd love to work with again on whatever they decide to do. And there's so many, there's a few artists out there that I've never gotten to work with so that if they came to me and they said, Hey, Humberto Ramos is drawing Hanna-Barbera, Bugs Bunny. Like, I'm in. Cause I know how <laughs> great Humberto is and, and how much of a, what a great experience that would end up being for me and hopefully for him too. So I assume that's a no on myself, John Condiment King series. <laughs> yeah, you oh, so you're drawing it? Of course. Oh. I have to, only I can add that certain Condiment King and Pyra Clayface look that no other artist would be able to replicate. <laughs> yeah. I've taken it upon myself. I'm just a God, you know, it's hard to find good help these days. It's up to me to kind of carry the uh, whole book, but I, I gladly accept this honor. You know, I, I, I imagine my comic was so brilliant. We'll probably get maybe a trilogy in the next year or so, because I just assume that's how it works. And I just like, okay, money, please. And then I got sorted. Um, so yeah, my last, you've, you've been so kind to talk to us, but my last and final sure, of course. if anyone was looking to get into comics, what advice would you have for them? Well, I think it's, it's, it's about persistence, not yes. only in, in, in searching for, for an opportunity, but persistence in, in, in getting better at it. So I would say you have to draw paint color every day uh, because if you don't do it, you're not going to improve. Yeah. Uh, it is in, in that doing it every day that you're going to become better at it. You can become faster at it. You're going to realize that how much better you are and how much, how, how not good you were before. Right. So it's that, it, it, it's that improving that strive to improve that's going to drive you yeah. to, you know, have pride in your work uh, and want to show it to artists. And so, you know, make sure that, that you show it to, to artists and editors, make sure that you listen um, to their critiques and also make sure that you don't only listen to the things that they don't like that you need to work on. Listen to the things that they like, because that's the stuff you want to continue to do. Yeah. Absolutely. And actually, I don't think we could end on a better note. Alex, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure interviewing you. But before we finish up, is there anything you'd like to talk about or promote or anything like that? Um, well, we talked about Amazing Spider-Man. I'm on, I'm on that book. Uh, I think for a couple more issues, there's a giant-sized Amazing Spider-Man that I'm on. And then ah. we're coming on, uh, look for... I have a couple projects with dc that haven't been announced yet that i'm excited about there's another marvel series that hasn't been announced that i'm going to be work, working on and so the i unfortunately i can't plug them it's kind of me um, and pirate play face you already know you know your tells gave it away the second i brought it up your nose started twitching so i was like ah oh, we got them here yeah. i could see yeah. it right. i thought we weren't talking about that yet <laughs> yeah you see, I, you see I, I have this great way i'm such a detective you know i know it's the subtleties and all that so i cracked the case just in one interview so i pat on the back to me i suppose and um, so yeah of course spider-man what issue is out now i think it's about issue. Uh, so 63 through 65 is the 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 arc and then there's a giant uh, giant sized amazing spider-man um uh, that comes out right after that continues the story and then i pick back up with issue 70 on amazing spider-man and then I'm doing a bunch of covers for Marvel and a bunch of covers for DC, uh, uh, little projects here and there uh, with other folks. So, I mean, Green Lantern, the first two issues I, I colored, those are coming out right now. Yes. Um, so DC is still sending me work. It's not a ton like it used to be, but I'm still, I still love DC. I still want to work with DC. Um, and then uh, I'm also tapped to do a couple other things with other companies. Mm -hmm. Astro City's coming back. 
And so we're going to be releasing Astro City through Image Comics. So Kurt Music's already writing the next arc. I think we're going to do them in, in digests instead of floppies. So instead of monthlies, you're just going to get a, here's your graphic novel. Ah, and I just assume you haven't gotten my Conman King and Pirate Clayface script or my pages. That just, I think your email might be a little bit busted. Right. Then it does now. I'm sure that's it. You know, just, you know, color them. I won't pay you, but, you know, you'll get the honor of knowing that you got to color a Conman and King page. So uh, that's all. That's <laughs> that's the really only honor you need. Uh, but before, are you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, MySpace or anything, or anything like that? All of the above. So uh, on Facebook, it's Alex and Claire on Instagram and Twitter and pretty much everywhere else it's sync color so it's s-i-n-c-c-o-l-o-r so the way i sign my work is sync and the word yeah. color wow and so do you have a website or anything like that or just the socials just the socials um probably toying with launching a website and then in a month or two ah brilliant um so yeah thank you guys so much for watching this has been me and i'll talk to you a little bit after this alex uh, thank you guys so much for watching as always, please make sure to like and subscribe. Go follow my Economy King and Pirate Clay face series. That's obviously going to come out soon enough because, you know, I've used this as a launching platform to get the word out, you know. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. As always, stay safe and please make sure to donate to National Deaf Children's Society. Link for that in the description. Go check out Alex on the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and please make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Stay safe. Thank you all for watching and Alex, thank you again. I'll talk to you here. Uh, but stay safe, everyone. Bye.